Hey everyone, this is Ashpreet and today I'll show you how to build agents from scratch. This is a very beginner friendly video where I'll walk through how I build agents step by step and in detail. I'm making this video because a lot of engineers have asked me how they can get started with building agents. They share that the content I generally put out is more on the advanced side and ask how they can build that foundational knowledge before moving on to the more advanced concepts. So if you're just starting out with AI engineering and would like to learn how to build agents, this video is for you. We won't put a cap on how long this video can get and we'll walk through every point in detail. If you like videos like this, please do let me know so I can make more of them. Now let's get started. Uh, before we build agents, we need to understand what are agents and what is Agno. Agno is a very lightweight library for building multimodal agents. Multimodal agents can take any modality as input. They can take text, image, audio, video input. They process that input using a set of tools and generate any modality as output. They can generate text, they can generate images, audio, and video. Now let's, uh, let's walk through an example. Let's say we ask our agent what's happening in New York, and the agent has a tool to search the web. Our agent will run that tool to search the web, get the latest news from New York, synthesize those results, and then give us an answer. Now let's take this a step further. Let's say we give our agent a, a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge, and we'll give it a tool to search the web and generate audio using Eleven Labs. And let's say we also give it a tool to send us an email. And the text is generate a new segment of this uh, of the city and send it to me in an email. In that case, the agent will search for the top news from New uh, from San Francisco because it knows the Golden Gate Bridge is in San Francisco. It'll synthesize the news from there, generate an audio clip using Eleven Labs, and send that audio clip to us in email. You see how we can automate multimodal tasks using these lightweight agents, and that's what Agno enables. With Agno, agents uh, look like this, what we have on the right. It's a simple Python object, nothing too complex. It's an agent, it's got a model, that's like the brains of the operation. The model figures out uh, how to achieve the task that is received as input. In this case, we're using GPT-4.0 as the model for this agent. It's got a set of tools to achieve its task. It's got the 11 labs tools to generate audio. It's got the replicate tools to generate video, DuckDuckGo or SERP API to search the web. Similarly, you can give any types of tools you want. You can give your own APIs as tools as well. Next, the agent has knowledge. The model generally has a vast knowledge of its uh, training data corpus, but that is genetic knowledge. What if we wanna provide domain-specific information? In this case, let's say I wanna provide Agno's documentation as knowledge to this agent. I can provide that and store that in a vector database. All of these building blocks come together very neatly with Agno. Without Agno, it would take us a lot of time to put all of these pieces together, to write the API calls, to uh, do the integrations, to manage load, chunk the uh, contents, and store it in a vector database. With Agno, it's simply 10 odd lines. Um, the beauty about Agno is that we obsess over performance. We've been putting agents into production for about two years now, and what we've realized is that simple tasks can sometimes trigger hundreds and thousands of agents, meaning the agents need to be very, very lightweight, and Agno, as a library, needs to have a minimal set of dependencies. It can't interfere with the actual software that's running. So our obsession with performance has led to Agno agents being started up in roughly about two microseconds. We've tested this on a uh, M4 Pro. And the memory usage, the memory footprint for each agent is roughly about three and a half kilobytes. So you can spawn thousands of these agents very, very quickly and have and provide your users with the best agent experience. Now, another beauty about Agno is that it's completely open source. You can go to agno.link slash gh or scan this QR code on the right and it'll take you to our GitHub repository. Uh, over here, um, under the cookbook, we have hundreds of examples that'll show you how to build agents. And it's also got the full code over here. You can see exactly what's going on. And the beauty about open source is that you can verify it's secure. You can actually check what's happening behind the scenes. You can fork Agno and then 
change it to your taste if you'd like. Um, almost, there are almost 3,000 folks of this repository as well. Um, now, let's walk through building a few simple basic agents with one uh, multimodal agent which we're going to build. Uh, the agents which we're going to build, build are under the cookbook agents from scratch directory. So clone Agno with git clone and this URL and open it up in the code editor of your choice. I've got it open over here in a uh, cursor. So this is the Agno repo. Under cookbook agents from scratch, this is the readme file that's open. This is the same readme file which is over here. And we'll walk through these agents, we'll build these agents from scratch together. So I'll open up my code editor over here and then I'll open up a terminal. Um, over here, the first step which we're going to do, because this is a Python library, we're going to create a virtual environment. We'll use UV to create a virtual environment, and we'll activate the virtual environment. Again, I, I want to do everything step by step. Then we're going to install the required dependencies. One of the things which you're going to notice is how minimal and lightweight Agno really is. Uh, obviously, UV installs the dependencies very, very quickly, but Agno comes with only like a minimal set of required dependencies. Uh, then export your OpenAI API key. I'm using 11 labs for the uh, final Agno Assist agent, which will generate an audio. So um, you can use any audio tool you'd like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to walk through these agents. We're going to walk through like a simple agent. We're going to walk through agent with tools. So I'm going to run a couple of these in the terminal and then move on to the agent UI where we can interact with them with a really beautiful chat interface for our agents. So first things first, let's run the simple agent on the terminal and see what's happening. This is what a, the very basic agent looks like. It's got a name. We can, this is optional, so we don't have to give it. It's got a model, so this is the only required piece, and it's got a set of instructions. So this simple agent, um, we've asked it to become a news reporter, and we've asked share a news story from New York and SF. Now, this will obviously make things up. Here are the commands to run the agents in the CLI, in the terminal, before going on to the playground. So let's run this. So actually, we'll just do simple agent because we're in the agents from scratch directory. And when we run this, it'll make that story up. This is obviously like um, not a real story. Now, how do we prevent this hallucination? We do it by giving it a tool to search the web. DuckDuckGo uh, has a free API. It gets rate limited at times, so I won't put it in production. Um, but giving it this web search tool will allow us to, uh, to avoid this hallucination and give us an actual story from New York and SF. So now when we ask here a new story from New York and SF, this agent has the DuckDuckGo tools. We see it runs that tool to search for news from New York, search for news from San Francisco. It's only picking out one. We can instruct it to pick out multiple news stories and pick the most entertaining one. And then it gives us that news. Along with that, it also gives us a link to that news story. So we know that this is real. We can go check it out ourselves. Uh, now, let's move on to the playground. The next part about the agent, as we see with the tools, that's like level zero agents are just simple inference tasks. Level one agents are agents with tools. And then we add knowledge, reasoning, storage, memory, continue to expand on them with more and more tools. But now, instead of running it on the command line, let's move on to running it on the agent UI. The first thing which we're going to do is we're going to authenticate our application with the Agno app, with our terminal. This is only so that when we run the playground, it, it'll it ping the Agno and tell the application that I'm running it on localhost 7777. So with the Agno app, you can monitor your agents, you can check out the sessions we just had. So we just had this share news story from New York and SF. It'll show you these tools were ran. You don't have to send any data to the Agno servers if you don't want to. This is optional. Um, and then give, it'll give us this beautiful playground to interact with our agents. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to run the Python playground file. Let's look at that file first. In this playground file, the playground application is a simple, fast API server. There's nothing complex about this, and um, it's, it's serving these agents to us. It just puts up a set of routes which the agent UI can work with. We're going to run this file over here. 
Python playground.py and it will start up a playground server at localhost 7777. And the authentication, the AG setup piece, is so that the Agno application knows that, okay, this user is serving at the 7777 port. Um, we can completely avoid this, and you can just add the endpoint manually as well if you don't want the setup piece. So, okay, so the Playground server started. As I mentioned, this is a simple fast TPS server, no complex uh, tech happening behind the scenes. And you can either click on this link, or you can choose that endpoint yourself directly. Now we have the simple agent, which we just tested with. We have the agent with tools. The next interesting bit for us is giving the agent some knowledge. So in our agent with knowledge, it's the same agent. The description and instructions are different. But what we've done is we've given our agent the Agno documentation as knowledge, and we've asked it to store in a LangsDB vector database. Uh, LangsDB is... Uh, is embedded it'll it's completely local so we can store it locally under this temp directory so we'll see that it's under store under temp directly lands db so this is where our documentation is stored so that's agnosis knowledge which you can see on the left over here and now what we can do is we can ask questions about agno and it'll search its knowledge and give us the answers now let's 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 take it for a spin uh, before you run this you should run this agent with knowledge file by setting load knowledge equal to true. This will load that knowledge base for you. I've preloaded it to kind of keep this video short. Um, but you should run this file with load knowledge as true so your knowledge base can be loaded. Now with agent with knowledge, let's ask, uh, tell me about Agno. Now it'll search its knowledge base and you'll see the advantage of agent UI here. It'll be able to show us um, that this answer that's generated is generated from these uh, different, um, this is the references I use, what's the text behind it. So this kind of gives us a little more confidence in the agent's uh, responses. And it's saying it's from the LLM's full, it's chunk number 147, chunk size is 5,000 5, characters, and so on and so forth. Next piece for us is the agent with storage. Now this is where things get interesting a little, is along with knowledge, we can see that how do we actually continue and store these conversations in a database? We can't come back to these conversations. How do we resume this information? How do we provide the previous questions that, as chat history to the messages? Because the LLM APIs are stateless. You send it a list of messages and you get an answer. But how can Agno help you maintain that list of messages is by adding a storage system to it. We can store the agent sessions in any database of our choice. We can store it in SQLite, Postgres, MongoDB, DynamoDB. We can even like create JSON and YAML storage systems, which I'm personally not a fan of. I'd rather just use SQLite, but you know, who am I to stop you with that? Uh, now let's go to agent with storage here. And now we can see my previous conversations have popped up here anyway. So if I ask uh, what are Agnos key features, what it will do is first it will search its knowledge for this information and give me the key features for Agno. But the interesting point over here is with storage, I can give it the ability to send previous messages in that messages list automatically. Generally, when we send the messages, it'll be like one at a time. But now when we say add history to messages, it'll add those previous messages. So it'll add what are, so this is the first user message. This is the tool call you made. This is the tool result and this is the assistant response. And then if I ask, uh, what was my last question? It'll be able to give me that answer. What are Agno's key features? Now in this case, what it did is we also add a read chat history function. That's the other way of providing short-term, long-term memory to your agent is we can give it the read chat history function, which it can call to get the last. But if you were to not give that, it'll still be able to answer this question. Um, but this get chat history function is great because we only want to send the last three, four, five messages in the messages list. This allows us to kind of this allows the agent to actually read the entire chat history with the user. All right, moving on. Now, how do we put this together? We've been working with the Agno documentation, so it's only fair 
we build an agent that acts as Agnos support pod. Now, each one of you, each one of the developers that are watching this has some sort of product that you'd like to be able to chat with. You'd like to put its documentation in there. You'd like to be able to kind of like interact with it, like have an agent that can help you build systems or code with that product. So here's an example that you can use. So this is going to be Agnosis, but you can make it Django Assist, Flask Assist. You can put fast APR documentation in there. You could anything, any like kind of knowledge you want to put, you can put in there along with that. So we've given it a description, instructions. Next, what we're going to do is we're also going to give it a set of tools. We're going to give it a Python tools, which can say like write code, save it to a file, run it for us. We're going to give it 11 labs to generate audio, and we're going to give it Dolly to generate images. And of course, we're going to give it the storage system as well. So this is Agnosis, folks. And uh, so the agent has Agnos documentation as knowledge, so we can ask it to, can you create an agent that can search the web? Using Agnos documentation, it can find one of the examples, take that examples, and give it to us along with uh, the steps to run this as well. Now, next, it'll ask us to create this file and run it, um, but I'm going to skip that piece. What I'm more interested in is, can you create an image of this agent, but, you know, put it on top of the golden gate bridge. So because this is pointing to the older image generation Dolly model, it won't be as impressive as the images that are floating on Twitter now. But as soon as that is, that's available on the API, you can plug that image model here and generate those images as well. Uh, next, you can ask it to generate an audio clip of the environment as well. So you have this image of the agent, you can convert that into a video, add audio to it. And using multimodal agents, a lot more is possible. All right, so this agent is now standing on top of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge here. So I'm going to cap it here, folks. This is Agents from scratch, there are a couple of uh, agents which I've worked through in this cookbook over here. Along with that, we have hundreds of other examples. You can actually go to our documentation and from there you can see a lot more examples along with agent teams, workflows, uh, applications like Agentigrag, SQL, you can generate games, um, you can make agents play chess if you'd like. Uh, so a lot is possible with these agents. Uh, let me know what you're working on by dropping a comment in this video. But uh, it's been a pleasure and uh, hope you have a fun day. See you all later. Bye.